20 years ago on 9-11, I was a stay-at-home mom who was teaching at Rutgers Law School at night and practicing just a little law. I had two sons, one was nine and one was seven. And I had a husband who worked in the federal building in Newark. He called me uh, at nine o'clock in the morning and told me to turn the TV set on. And like many of your listeners and many of you who are watching, um, you turn the TV set on and couldn't believe your eyes. Um, we live at the Jersey Shore. Uh, most of the people that I know and knew at the time worked in New York City, took the train to the fair or took a car to a ferry and dropped their car off and took the ferry over to New York or took a train into the city. Those were our friends. Those were our children's friends. So I, I watched the TV for a little while and then walked down to the beach where you had a straight shot of the city and you could see the towers burning. And um, you understood immediately the impact of that. And we went back, watched television some more and the towers came down and, and they kept repeating the towers up and then the towers coming down and the towers up and the towers coming down. And my two kids were at school. Now remember nine would have been like fourth grade and seven would have been about third grade. And I, as a parent had a decision to make, do I go and get my children who were in class with kids whose parents were working in New York City at the time? Or do I leave him in school where I knew he would be safe? Um, both of them, I left them both in school. I, I'll never forget going to pick the nine-year-old up at the bus stop, which is at the end of the street where he had just watched the smoke from the towers, getting off the bus and saying, mom, why didn't you come and get me? I was the only person in school. All the other parents or caregivers had gone to pick the kids up to go home to see what was going on, to see quite frankly, whether their other parents would be coming home that night. I think that was what shocked me the most. I'm absolutely positive. That's why my son is now a fighter pilot in the United States Air Force, that one who got off the bus and said, why didn't you, and said, why didn't you come and get me? To this day, the sound of that voice echoes in my ears. I didn't think the seven-year-old was old enough to, to in, feel the impact of all of this until he came home from school, literally a week later, Shelly, with a picture, and I still have it, I should have brought it today, a picture of an airplane flying into a tree with people falling out of it. Now, if when that happened, you said to yourself, well, this is not going away fast. This is never going to end. And I think for most of the people my age, I'm 61. It happened when I was 41. I think they will never forget where they were that day, especially those of us at the Jersey Shore, the crisp blue sky and the impact on our, on our minds of this building going up and down and coming up and down and going back up and down. I, I, I can't begin to tell you how even 20 years later, it still makes me emotional. It still makes me teary eyed. Um, and especially having been Lieutenant Governor for eight years where every 9-11, we went to four or five memorials. Um, you're constantly reminded of what happened that day and we will never forget. What really scares me, and I know my Air Force pilot will never forget. Um, what scares me is what will happen when their children grow up. I don't want them ever to forget because when you let your guard down, the acts of terrorism that occurred that day means that they won. And I never want them to win. People need to remember that this was an act of terrorism. It was murder. It was a crime. And that if we're not ever vigilant, it will happen again. So um, I want to thank you for doing what you're doing, Shelley, making sure that we memorialize these stories because our children's children need to be reminded. Do you regret the decision you made on that day 
leaving the kids in school? I regret the, I regretted the decision the second he got off the bus and said, why didn't you come and get me? I'm the only one in school. Literally, he was the only one on the school bus, which was normally full. He was the only person in his classroom, which was normally full. Um, did I regret the decision? I don't know. I think it impacted his life. I truly believe, in my opinion, and we've never had this conversation, that he went on to MAST, which is the local um, military school, county public military school. Then he want, went on to the Air Force Academy, and, and now he's been flying a fighter, fi a fighter plane for five years. So I, I don't regret it. I don't think there was a right answer that day. Uh, I think the saddest part of the day was listening to the sirens as our ambulances drove down to the end of Sandy Hook to pick up people as they were finding a way back across um, the harbor to safety, quite frankly. And also what shocked us for days after that was the smell. You will never, we will never forget waking up in the middle of the night when the wind would change. The buildings continued to burn. Other buildings came down days later and you could smell it in the air. It was that pronounced from, as the, as the crow flies, I can stand at the end of my street and see the city on a clear day. And so the smell is always something that's gonna stay with us. I don't think you can capture that, but I, I don't regret that decision. I do know it had a lasting impact on my family. Do you know what the teachers were saying to your older son that day? The teachers were as shocked as everybody else, which made it very, very difficult. Um, and yes, I did, all the teachers were friends at this particular school. And this principal was a friend at this particular school. They stayed open. It was a religious, it's Catholic school. So the priest came by. I, I know they all said prayers. Um, look at me, now you got me all upset. <laughs> But I think that's the point, right? To, to let people know that it's, it's still hot, it's still burning, it's still unbelievable. Even with the recession that we saw, even with Sandy that hit us here, even with the pandemic that we're living through now, I think 9-11 for the people in this area, in this region has scarred them forever. Do you know of people personally that that, that died that sure. day? And did your sons know? Yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, everybody attended funerals yeah. and services um, for weeks after that. The gentleman across the street passed away. Um, we actually, on the airplanes, my husband was a federal prosecutor at the time, and all of the prosecutors were deployed to go interview families of those that lost their lives on, on all of the airplanes. And one of the victims on the flight into, into uh, Pennsylvania that went down, um, his last name was Guadano, no relation, but my husband had an opportunity to go interview the Guadano family about the gentleman that passed, his name is on the wall. Um, and th what the federal prosecutors were doing was collecting evidence in case there was a prosecution. And there was, at the end of the prosecution, there was a, a, a plea for mercy. They were gonna have the families come in and testify. And as we all know, there were no real trials because there were no real survivors. But um, it's, it, it, for him, even though it wasn't family, it, to see Guadano, which is my last name, his last name, um, and interview the family of a Guadano also remain, remains with us till today, too. I don't know at what point in your life you got involved with politics, but did 9 11 have any bearing on that decision? Well, 9-11 was 2001. I did not get involved in my first little run for office in, for the commissioner in the little tiny town of Monmouth Beach that I live in until 2005. And so I, I can't honestly say that it did. I can say that as a public official, 9-11 took on greater meaning because you constantly, every year at the same time, several times a day, um, you know, Monmouth County has some beautiful services, um, but the state had beautiful services. So from 2005 through 2017, 
um, I've attended at least four to five 9-11 services every 9-11 and, and had an opportunity to talk about it. I like to say my son grew up <laughs> during some of these speeches, but um, you know, New Jersey's been fabulous. They have some fabulous memorials. They're beautiful, um, beautiful, beautiful memorials to the memory, but also reminders of the lesson. Do you remember if your sons in the days after were asking questions about this? Did they keep it to themselves? How did that I mean, digest it? So of course we all talked about it. We all first husband to wife, we talked about whether I made the right decision. My husband worked for three weeks constantly around the clock interviewing all these people because he was a federal prosecutor. So we didn't get to see him much. Um, so excuse me, now you made me teary eyed and sniff nose. Um, but the kids all talked about it. Um, it, it. My oldest son especially talked about it. But the seven year olds, when he brought that picture home, maybe I would get say three weeks later, that's when I knew that this was gonna have a lasting impact on their psyche. Um, because none of us, neither one of us, my husband or I would have, would have bet that he was old enough to assimilate all this information. And then to express it in artwork was, uh, was shocking as a parent. Is there anything else you wanna add, Kim? No, I think, I think um, you know what, I, I, I will say one last and one story that's fast forward to the 10th anniversary. I'm sitting in a car with a trooper and I, I think I might've mentioned this to you later. Um, and I'm complaining about going from one event to the next to the next, because they really do take a toll on you. And I'm, it's a pretty childish complaint. And I, I, I just getting ready to go to the next event, having spent 10 minutes just whining, and I turned to the trooper who was driving me and I said, you know, so where were you the day of 9-11? And he said, I was a New York City police officer on the job. And I was like, Hork? you know, like smacked me in the face for being so um, mundane and so self-centered that I had forgotten that we were doing something really serious here and that people were impacted by it. And so for the rest of the day, no matter what church I went to and no matter what scene I went to, I told the story about how we can't ever forget and never get, let the little things take over your lives, especially on that day. So that trooper also taught me a lesson and that is to be forever mindful of, of the everyday things are so senseless. They everyday problems, are just so meaningless when you put it in perspective of what happened on 9-11 and the wars that we're still fighting as a result of that. So that's what I would add, Shelley. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that story. Mm -hmm.